Hi, I'm Doug with Cribble Creek Backcountry, here to talk about everything you know about buying your first or next pair of skins. Everything from sizing a skin, cutting a skin, and general care and maintenance for your skins. To begin with sizing your skin, the most important thing you need to know is the dimensions of your ski. I'm looking at a Vole uh, Hyper Vector here, and in most skis, there'll be one central place where all the dimensions are located. Uh, the things you got to think about are the tip, the waist, and the tail. This ski happens to be 127 in the tip, uh, 94 under the waist, and 111 in the tail. And the reason that's important is because that's what we're going to figure out goes on the bottom of the ski. There's two general philosophies for sizing a skin. One would be to cover just the kick zone fully from edge to edge. So that would be right under the foot of your binding right there. And you would want it to come all the way to the edge of the ski here. Uh, and then it would be fine to show some black on the base. So as you go to the tip, the ski flares out and you're gonna have just a little sliver of black showing there and sometimes even a little black on the tail. For optimal grip, you would go to the widest part of the ski. Again, in this ski, it's a 127. So I would get a ski, a skin around 130 to 140, and I would cut it all down. That would be for the best possible grip. But again, just covering this gives you 99% of the grip and even a little bit better glide. Sometimes you're saving between 10 and 20 bucks to go down to the next width. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, but that is the most important part for the width. This ski is 177 centimeters long, so most skins have a pretty wide range. Uh, a skin that's around 170 to 185, that would be right in the meat of the zone, but it would be also fine to go with the ski that's 175 up to 190. Uh, and that is, you know, the general length. There'll be plenty of adjustment in the tail and you won't have to worry about it. So that's sizing a skin. Uh, if you don't have it conveniently written on the center of the ski like Volet does, you'll be totally good to look it up online or even taking a tape measure in millimeters and just running it from edge to edge in those three key spaces, the tip, the waist, and the tail. So the next thing we have to talk about is choosing what you want your skin to be made out of. There's two types of materials that we use in almost every type of skin, uh, nylon and mohair. Nylon being the synthetic material, mohair being the all natural. If you think about characteristics of the two, nylon, it's cheaper and it's grippier when mohair will be, you know, better gliding, a little bit more expensive, but overall a much better product. What we recommend at Cripple Creek is a blend of the two. All three of these Pomoka skins here are 70% mohair and 30% nylon. Uh, we almost never recommend a full nylon skin anymore just because it, it feels like sandpaper on the skin track. You might get 2% better grip out of it, but that's not gonna be worth it for the lack of efficiency. On the other end of the spectrum would be a full mohair skin. That's great if you're really into the sport and it's like a performance bike tire, something you don't mind changing out every one to two years, but if you hit a rock, you're very likely to rip it. These skins are durable because of that 30% that nylon, but they have all the great characteristics of mohair. When we look through the three options, the Pro S Glide, this teal one, is their premium skin for all things durability, glide. Uh, the yellow is the Climb 2.0, still 70-30 blend, but this will be the cheapest skin. And then the last one is the Climb Pro, and that one is the best for just sheer pack of building lightness. This packs down to, you know, a tube of toothpaste in your backpack. Uh, so this one will have a little bit more durability issues, and if you really want something that's going to last a while, go with the yellow or teal. So the next thing to think about is most touring skis on the market these days will come with a pre-cut skin. And in 80% of the cases, it's going to be a Pomoka skin. Usually the Pro is Glide on a nicer skin and then the Climb 2.0.
And all that means is out of the factory, it's being laser cut to the dimensions of your ski. So you don't have to mess with setting it up for your, your personal ski. Uh, in the end, there'll be no performance difference. Using one of these is exactly as good as the one that comes in the box. So when it comes for caring for your skin, it's not as complicated as you think. Uh, sometimes I feel bad because there'll be some professional guides, avalanche forecasters that complain about their skins wearing out every season. And really, I think that's because they're on their skins 120 days a season. But generally, their skins fail before mine will, and it's because I don't actually treat my skins that well. A lot of times, they'll sit wet in my backpack for a few hours before I remember to take them out. And when I dry them, I'm almost always just putting them glue to glue and leaving it out. That's glue to glue. And leaving them out at room temperature for an hour before I put them away. In general, a skin will break down the worst when you're overheating them or over drying them. So never leave them hanging next to a fire or a hot heat source. And in the summer, really try to store them in a cool, dry place. Uh, that'll be way more important than you know making sure every last, last ounce of moisture is out of it before you put them away after a tour. So when it comes to storing your skin, in addition to never leaving it in a hot car or a hot attic, all you want to really think about is, especially on Pomoka, is storing them tip to tail and glue to glue. Uh, these skins don't come with the skin saver anymore. Uh, it stays just better, the glue stays more moist if you just keep it stored together. It comes with a plastic backing. We just throw that away. And in fact, even on the box these days, they'll show a little graphic <laughs> with a trash can. So it doesn't matter if you're Swiss or American, you're just throwing that plastic away. No need to use skin savers with these skins. So that's a brief intro on climbing skins. Uh, there's lots more to learn. If you need any help picking one out, just email us at info at cripplecreekbc.com.